Hey, I'm Pat, welcome to Daily Devo. Today we're gonna to talk about harmony. Do you realize that if I were to list all the assorted denominations within the church world, we would be here for quite some time? We have the Methodists, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Nazarenes, the Presbyterians, the Orthodox, and the list goes on and on and on. In fact, if you know anything about the history of the church, the denominations couldn't even see eye to eye, meaning the Baptists couldn't agree with each other, the Presbyterians couldn't agree with each other, the Pentecostals couldn't agree with each other, so they had to separate into a bunch of subcategories. So now we have American Baptist, Southern Baptist, General Baptist, Free Will Baptist, Primitive Baptist, Conservative Baptist, I'm right and you're wrong, Baptist. Okay, I made that last one up. <laughs> However, if you know anything about denominational fighting, you know that could be the subtitle for many, if not most, church denominations. We're right and you're wrong. It's gotten so crazy that it's estimated that there's over 40,000 different denominations. That means that at the minimum, 40,000 times, a group somewhere sat down and said, we don't agree on these certain points, so we're going to come up with a new name and do our own thing. 40,000 times. Now, having different denominations and different churches based on cultural and ethnic styles, it's not all bad. In some ways, it displays the creativity of God that he made so many different kinds of people with different tastes and preferences. However, I think we can agree that while there is some beauty in this, there's also a big, big problem that has some critical ramifications. This month, we've been looking at some of the hundred one another's that are in the Bible, and there are two interesting ones found in Romans. Romans chapter 15, 5 states, May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 12, verse 16 states really the same thing. Different translations will say it slightly different, all of them giving us more clarity into the meaning of this verse. Some say, be of the same mind. Some say, be in unity. Uh, others say, be in complete harmony. One of the things that I have loved about all of my international travel is to meet other believers who speak other languages and are part of another culture that I don't completely understand. But what's fascinating and mysterious is that while I could not grasp their language or their culture, I would feel a deep connection to them. The old adage is so true, spirit is thicker than blood. I was connected to them because we are the same spirit. However, this harmony, this unity, this, this being of the same mind that Paul calls for goes beyond just the spiritual. How do I know that? Well, on the last night of Jesus' life, as he sat with his disciples and he spent a considerable amount of time speaking about unity and harmony, at one point he's praying to his Father and he prays this prayer in John chapter 17. I pray that they would be one as we are one. Listen closely to what he says next. I pray that they would be one as we are one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them. Jesus is saying, I pray that they would be in unity. I pray that they would be in complete harmony. I pray that they would be of the same mind. Why? Why? So that the world would know. Clearly, this went beyond just a spiritual unity because Jesus is saying that when you and I are in harmony and unity, it is something that the world will sit up and take notice of. And this unity and harmony will point them to God. In other words, Jesus is saying that one of the best tools that we have to show people God is being in harmony and unity with one another. This brings up another question. What does it mean to be in harmony or unity with each other? Does it mean that we have to agree on every minor point of doctrine? No, no, of course not. Not even Paul, when he wrote this letter 2,000 years ago, he and the earlier followers were disagreeing about a lot of minor doctrinal points. What Paul is saying is that we need to keep the main thing, the main thing. That being of the same mind or, 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 or harmony or unity comes from focusing on our common salvation, our shared purpose to reach our world with the love of God, our shared hope in God. What if today you and I focus on what we have in common with other Jesus followers? 
What if today we chose not to die on so many hills that don't really matter that much? What if today we kept the main thing the main thing? Imagine if we didn't just do that today, but we started making that the pattern of our life. You know what would happen if we consistently kept the main thing the main thing? More people would discover the goodness and the love of God. Jesus said, I pray that they would be one as we are one so that the world may know.